in the war-ravaged halls of his capital, a weary Antiochus the Great found respite, his once buoyant spirit weighed down by the burdens of conflict. The air hung heavy with the scent of battle, and the scars of war adorned both the landscape and the soul of the Seleucid ruler. As he sought solace, news arrived in the form of a herald, bearing tidings that Ptolemy of Egypt, his perennial rival, had met his demise. The weariness momentarily lifted from Antiochus's shoulders, replaced by a renewed flame ignited by the embers of old enmity. With a solemn determination, he picked up his sword, the blade worn by the countless struggles it had witnessed, and ordered the Seleucid army to advance once more. Syria, a prize long sought, would now be his, as Antiochus, fueled by the prospect of conquest, prepared to unleash the might of the Seleucid forces upon the fateful land where destiny and war converged. In the last episode, Antiochus the Great aimed to reclaim eastern territories, defeating the Greco-Bactrians in 209 BC. Opting for an honourable peace, he negotiates unexpected concessions with Euthydemus' son, Demetrius. However, Syria is still open for glory, and Antiochus prepares for round two against the Ptolemies, the crossroads of destiny looming. In Syria, the last time we checked, Ptolemy had beaten Antiochus and chased him away. But Ptolemy's victory led to his own problems. He had armed the local Egyptians, not realising it would lead to a rebellion against him. Ptolemy, trying to control the Egyptians again, ended up facing his downfall in the process. Antiochus saw this as a chance to settle the score. In 204 BC, Ptolemy IV died, and his young son Ptolemy V inherited a kingdom in chaos. There was a power struggle for control, marked by murders and chaos. Antiochus took advantage of this mess and invaded Syria for the second time. He convinced Philip IV of Macedon to help him, and together they planned to conquer parts of Ptolemaic territory in Asia Minor and Syria. Antiochus quickly won battles, including a big one at the Battle of Panium, where he secured the important port of Sidon. Meanwhile, Rome, a rising superpower from the west, got involved. In 200 BC, Roman messengers warned Philip and Antiochus not to invade Egypt, protecting Rome's important grain supply. Since neither Antiochus nor Philip planned to attack Egypt, they agreed to Rome's demands. Antiochus finished his takeover in 198 BC and then went on to raid Ptolemy's coastal strongholds in Caria and Cilicia. Back in Ptolemy's kingdom, things were a mess. There were problems inside, economic troubles, and a movement led by Egyptian priests. In 195 BC, Ptolemy signed a treaty with Antiochus, giving up the territories and agreeing to marry Antiochus's daughter, Cleopatra I, just to calm things down at home. However, Rome, always watchful, had joined the story. A Carthaginian figure making his way to Antiochus's court would create big problems and bring disaster for the Seleucids. The stage was set for a calamity in the ancient political theatre. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Or if you really like the channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. There, for as little as $1 a month, you'll gain access to an ever-expanding variety of exclusive Ancient History Guy content not found anywhere else online. All donations go directly back into the channel, helping us on our campaign to conquer YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.